Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play WWF Royal Rumble. In the last episode, we played as the Nature Boy Ric Flair, and we also played as Mr. Perfect. And now we're going to play as two more Super Nintendo exclusive characters. So, one-on-one -on -one match, one player, one fall, set the difficulty to seven, and let the computer choose the opponent. You know how this deal goes by now. And for the first person I'm going to play as... I'm going to pick Tatanka. Relative newcomer to the WWE at that point. Going up against Ted DiBiase, who I will play as immediately after this. Anyway, Tatanka was a relatively new talent in the WWE at the time that this game came out, within the first half of 1993. Debuted in 1992. And he had a really good undefeated streak going on for basically about a year. He f had his first real feud with the model Rick Martel after Rick Martel stole his eagle feathers. They would have a short feud which ended up having Tatanka beating Martel at WrestleMania 8. But it wasn't until Survivor Series 1992 that Tatanka would find him again and get the eagle feathers back. After that he didn't really do much but he did keep winning matches. Even though he would lose at house shows, they wouldn't count because they weren't televised. He would get a shot at the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 9 and take on Shawn Michaels, but he won by count out and the title could only change hands by pinfall or submission, so Shawn Michaels was able to retain. Tataka's undefeated streak came to an end on October 30th, 1993 on WWE Superstars after losing to Ludwig Borga who had just shown up not long before that. He managed to hit Tatanka with a chair while the referee was distracted thanks to distractions and interference by Mr. Fuji, Yokozuna, and the Quebecers. Lex Luger had to fight through all of those bad guys just to save Tatanka from further harm. And now it's time to show off the finisher. Get your opponent in the tie-up when they're in the red. And when they come back to you, press R and you'll do Tataka Samoan Drop Finisher known as the Papoose to Go. Yes, it actually has a name. They changed it to End of the Trail when he had his heel turn when he became a bad guy in 1994 when he joined, of all things, Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation. And, well, we managed to beat Ted DiBiase with Tatanka. So, next up, we're going to be playing as Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. So, we finally got four of the Super Nintendo exclusive characters covered now that we've gotten this video out of the way. We're getting it out of the way. And the only one I will have after this is Yokozuna. And boy, is he going to be fun to talk about in the next one. Also, I'm setting the difficulty to 9 because, well, that'll basically be the equivalent of a Genesis, Genesis version difficulty of 5. Super Nintendo version is a lot easier somehow. I don't know why, but it is. And we're going to play as Ted DiBiase against Yokozuna, who I'll be playing as, playing as in the next video, apparently. So the computer is just trying to troll me at this point. Anyway, we've already talked about Ted DiBiase in Part 6 when I talked about IRS because, well, he and IRS were tag teaming together in the first half of 1993. But you were probably wondering what Ted Di DiBiase was doing after he retired. Well, why did he retire? Well, he had two cervical discs in his spine injured. And after he left WWF, he actually wrestled for a little while in New Japan. Of course, his injuries came back to haunt him, and he eventually had to bow out of wrestling altogether before he took a more reduced role as a manager and whatnot. He started managing the Million Dollar Corporation in 1994, and one of the members was, interestingly enough, Erwin I. Scheisser, IRS. It would also include Bam Bam Bigelow, Psycho Sid, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, Tatanka, who would turn on Lex Luger and take a whole bunch of money out of Ted DiBiase's hands 
to join the corporation and sell out. But as the as 1994 and 1995 passed, well, everybody kept moving on to other lines of work. They all left the WWF, and there's that million dollar dream. You basically want to be behind a stunned opponent and then press R. Ted DiBiase will choke him out. They'll still be stunned, but you won't be able to do it again. So just punch, kick, or just put him in another grapple to put him back in the ground and just go for the pinfall. As I was saying, everybody would leave sooner or later. And the only person that DiBiase would be managing that was left was a debuting Steve Austin. Yes, the same guy who ended up being Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Steve Austin would actually hold the Million Dollar Championship, one of the few people to actually hold it. DiBiase would have to leave WWF after Austin lost to rival Savio Vega at a pay-per-view. Can't remember which one. In reality, the reason he left WWF behind the scenes was because he was heading to WCW, where he joined the NWO, and then the rest is kind of history. So, that's it for this one. Join me next time where I play as Yokozuna. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!